we are going to have to go through some things. Are y'all in here with me? You, 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 you can be doing everything right and still find yourself going through some storms. Welcome to the Lundy Experience, a broadcast of the Lundy Chapel Missionary Baptist Church where Reverend Anthony Q. Corbett Sr. is pastor. At Lundy Chapel, we are reaching the lost, teaching the found, and making disciples for heaven's ground. Let's join in Just on an exhilarating worship experience already. See, God will arrest your stress. Oh, even when you pray, even when you pray, have faith, have faith. He's never too late. To never too late. He's on time. time. No matter what we make, just pray. Say even when you pray, even when you pray, have faith, have faith. He's never too late. Say. Never too late. He's on time. Here we go. Oh, hold on, hold on. Say hold on. hold on, hold on, be strong, hold on, hold on, hold on, be strong, hold on, oh, the seasons in your life. Cause you to fall. Come on, sing now unto him who is able yeah, to keep you from falling. On him I call. Oh, hold on. Keep on holding on. I said, I 
keep holding, holding to God's hand. God's a changing hand. You gotta keep on holding, yeah. Say I keep holding, oh I keep holding, y'all. No matter come what may, yeah. I gotta keep holding on, y'all, yeah. When I'm sick, yeah, my body couldn't get away. God heal me y'all and now I gotta tell y'all no higher place that I have found no plant my feet y'all on higher ground oh say keep holding oh keep holding anybody gonna hold on or keep holding on say now somebody clap your hands real good Oh, uh, everybody just clap your hand. Come on. Everybody just clap your hand. If you really love the Lord, you want to clap your hand. Oh, hallelujah. Say, hold on, hold on. message is that God can be trusted to deliver his children when the fierce winds of life is blowing against you. Brother and sister, some several weeks ago as I was traveling to Athens, Georgia, I encountered a storm where it had gotten dark. The wind was blowing, thundering and lightning, heavy downpour of rain, and driving was extremely difficult. It was so much that I pondered uh, pulling over several different times during the ordeal. But however, in the course of that, I decided not to pull over to the shoulder of the road and risk being sideswiped or rear-ended by another car. So I kept on driving, kept driving and kept praying. And then eventually uh, I found myself have driven out of the storm. Look back in my rear view mirror and continue to see the dark clouds that was behind me and I thought to myself had I not just pulled over I would perhaps still be in the storm but because I kept going are y'all in here with me because I kept on moving I was able to drive out of the storm into better weather and that's all I come to tell you today. You got to learn, even when you deal with adverse situations in your life, you got to learn how to keep on rowing. The, the text, my brothers and sisters, found where Jesus, my brothers and sisters, had had a busy day for him and his disciples. Uh, they had ministered to a large crowd of people all day long. Jesus had taught them the word of God and when the late afternoon came Jesus 
manifested his power and his glory by feeding some over 5,000 people with five biscuits and two sardines. Uh, now the Bible said evening was fast approaching. Jesus then sends his men away by boat to the other side of the lake in verse 45. Jesus then goes up to the mountain to pray. The disciples find themselves in a storm. And when I looked at this text, I couldn't help but seeing these men, how they endured this time of testing, how they endured the storms of their life. And when I looked at that, it showed me how each of us can endure our storms. Are y'all in here with me? First of all, my brother and sister, keep rowing because point number one, you got to realize that pursuing the will of Christ doesn't exempt you from the storms of life. Are y'all in here with me? I said pursuing the will of Christ does not exempt you from the storms of life. The disciples were in a storm. Watch this here. Now, now, now when I look this here, this text, the disciples was ordered by Christ to go in the storm. Are y'all with me here? Too much trouble. I said the disciples were ordered by Christ to go into the storm. Because verse 45 said, and straightway he constrained his disciples to get in the ship and to go to the other side. Are y'all listening to me? The word constrained means to drive. It means to force, which means Jesus literally drove them into the boat and drove them into the stormy sea. Are y'all in here with me? Why does he do this? Well, I kept on looking at the text. He, he does it because the crowd was getting restless. And there was danger that might start a, a popular uprising because what the crowd wanted to do, according to John chapter 6, verse 14 and 15, they wanted to make Jesus king before it was time for him to be king. Are y'all listening to me? In other words, you know how we all do from time to time. We want to get our own agenda. We want to do our own thing. But, but, the, but the crowd had gotten kind of rowdy. They was talking about making Jesus king on earth. But Jesus was not made to be just an earthly king. Are y'all in here with me? He was made to be the king of kings. The Lord of lords. Y'all might have quiet, but I'm going to preach in a half. You, you got to understand that even in the midst of whatever you're dealing with, you got to learn how to keep on rowing. Because you got to realize that pursuing the will of Christ doesn't exempt you from the storms of your life. These disciples were ordered by Jesus himself to go in the midst of the storm. Not only, not only do I see where they were ordered by Christ, but then uh, they was obedient to Christ. Are y'all in here with me? I said they was obedient to Christ, and being obedient to Christ, they still encountered a storm. Watch this here. The disciples were out there in that boat in the middle of the storm simply because they were in the will of God. Will y'all just help me a little bit and say the will of God? Look here. Here they were in the storm. Because Jesus sent them there. Look, look, look out for, for those folk, uh, people who tell you that it's never God's will for the child of God to suffer and go through some things. Because every now and then, we're going to have to go through some things. Are y'all in here with me? You, 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 you can be doing everything right. And still find yourself going through some storms. He hit us in the text. The Bible said he sent his own disciples in the midst of a storm. They were ordered by Christ. And then they were obedient to Christ. And when I look at this, this suggests that adversity 
is not always the result of disobedience. Are y'all going to talk to me here? I said adversity is not always the result of disobedience. So many times people come to the conclusion that the reason I'm going through, the reason I'm dealing with this, or you know, the reason somebody else is dealing with it, is because they have been disobedient. But not so, according to the text. Are y'all in here with me? You can be living right. You can be giving God his time, his tithe, and his talent. And things will still happen in your life. Are y'all with me here? Adversity is not always because there was a discipline problem. You got to realize that pursuing the will of Christ don't exempt you from the storm. And if you're going to keep rowing during the storms of life, not only should you realize that, but the second thing, you must remember that you are under the perpetual watch of Christ. In other words, I'm always under his watch. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? I said the second thing, you must remember that you are under the perpetual watch of Christ during the storms. Because look at the text, that is verse 48. Watch this here. Says he saw them tolling and rowing. He saw them tolling in rowing for the wind was contrary to them watch this now he saw them where was he at he was in the mountain praying but he saw them you missed the whole message jesus is in the mountain praying the disciples on the sea in the storm, but he saw them. I'm going to try it again. The disciples was on the sea in the storm, but Jesus was in the mountain praying. You didn't get it. You may be in the midst of a trial. You've been giving God the praise. You've been giving God the glory. Jesus is in heaven looking over the banisters of glory. But he still see you in the midst of what you're going through. Are y'all in here with me? If you were ever going to shout, you should have shouted then. Because that's good news to know that no matter what you're going through, the good news is that the Lord still sees you. Can, can I help you here? Remember, you are under the perpetual watch of Christ. In, in, in other words, watch me here. The invisibility of Christ doesn't mean that he's ignorant of our circumstances. Can I just talk to you today? The, the, the invisibility of Christ. Watch text doesn't mean that he's ignorant of our circumstances because he knew exactly what the disciples were dealing with. God knows where we are and he knows what we are facing. Are y'all going to talk to me here? I don't care. It, it may seem like he don't see it. It may seem like that he's not there. The invisibility of Christ don't mean that he's ignorant of my situation because the text says he saw. It. Not only does the invisibility of Christ doesn't mean that he's uh, uh, ignorant of my circumstance, but the invisibility of Christ doesn't mean that he's not interested in my circumstances. Watch the text. The disciples probably felt like Jesus had gone off to do his own thing and that perhaps he could care less about what they were going through. But how many know or how many testimonies can be shared right now that even when you thought 
he wasn't there. Even when it looked like he was, even when it looked like he was invisible in all of our lives. Anybody ever had some times where it just seemed like no matter how you pray, no matter what you do, no matter how you say it, it just looked like he was invisible. It just looked like he didn't care. But not only, not only uh, does the invisible of Christ doesn't mean that he's ignorant of your circumstances, nor does it mean that he's not interested in our circumstance, but also the invisibility of Christ doesn't mean that he will not intervene on our behalf. That's the text. I'm sure the disciples thought that they were finished. Storm is raging. Thought it was over. Appeared to them that this storm was going to end their lives but the bible said when jesus came on the scene he was able to show them that there's always an end to the storm come on just loosen up just a little bit when jesus got on the scene he was able to show them that no matter what you go through there's an end to your storm May I remind you that Jesus knows what you are facing. He knows what you are able to take. And he will not allow you to be tested above your limits of endurance. Are y'all going to talk to me here? If you're going to keep rowing during the storms of life, then you must realize that pursuing the will of Christ don't exempt you from the storms. you got to remember that you are under the perpetual watch of Christ during the storm. Thirdly, we're going to make it before 12 today. Thirdly, you got to recognize the presence of and words of Christ during the storm. You got to recognize the presence and the words of Christ during the storm. Where do you find that at? Look at verse 49 through 51. Look at it. Because when you recognize his presence, when you hear his voice, are y'all in here with me? When you recognize his presence, when you hear his voice, Guess what will happen? It will dominate your difficulties. That is right there in the text. But you got to have his presence. You got to hear his voice. And it will dominate your difficulties. Watch here. According to verse 48 and 49, the very storm that disciples were in uh, 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 somewhere between 3 and 6 in the morning, the very storm that they were in, Jesus came walking on the sea. The very thing that disciples couldn't control that was, that was weighing them out, Jesus showed how he was bigger than their storm. Isn't that good news? You freaking out. And the thing that you freaking out over, Jesus is already on top of it. You ain't hearing me here. The, 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 the stuff You've been freaking out over. Jesus is already on top of it. Y'all just keep missing your opportunities to get your shout out. The things that you thought were going to take you out, Jesus is already on top of it. Look, look, look what happened. And that lets me know what kind of God we serve. He's an omnipotent God. Talk to me, somebody. He has all power, and he's in control of whatever I go through. Because the Bible is clear, for we know that all things work together for those that love the Lord and those that have been called according to his purpose. But, 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 but watch this now. Look what happened. Look what happened. Look what happened. You got to recognize his presence. You got to hear his voice. Are y'all in here with me? Because the text says, 
they saw him. Jesus was going to pass by, but they saw him. Are y'all in here with me? You got to get on post in the midst of your difficulties. You got to learn how to look for the right man. Talk to me, somebody. You've been looking for others. You've been looking at others. But the Bible said when they saw Jesus, that's when he stopped. Thought the Bible said they thought he was a ghost when they saw him. That is, he is walking on top of what they was afraid of. Are y'all in here with me? So you got to understand it, it, when you recognize his presence, when you hear his voice. I don't care what you're going through. If you give it to him, it will dominate your difficulties. Not, not, only, not only will it dominate uh, the difficulties, but then I kept on looking. And it gave me, it showed me that it discloses his deity in your difficulties. Because verse 49 says, when they thought it was a spirit, they began to cry out. But verse 50 says, and he immediately talked with them and said, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Oh, praise his name. When you're going through, he'll show you who he is. Y'all ain't feeling me. I said, when you're going through, the Lord will show you just who he is. I don't care what other folks say. I don't care how other folk have planted your downfall if God be for you. I'm, I'm going to find my gear here. Thank you for viewing this broadcast of the Lundy Experience. We pray that this broadcast has been a blessing to you and your entire family. If you would like to get the Lundy Experience live and in person, there are many opportunities for you to do so. We have Sunday school every Sunday beginning at 8.45 a.m. Our worship experience on first through fourth Sundays begins at 10 o'clock a.m. and on fifth Sundays beginning at 8 o'clock a.m. We also have youth church every first, third, and fourth Sunday beginning at 10 o'clock a.m. Every Wednesday night we have an exhilarating worship and work study beginning at 6 o'clock p.m. To get the latest information concerning Lundy Chapel, we encourage you to friend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, as well as on Instagram. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you at the chapel.